You're making me a monster, a monster, a monster I've been learning to me to a monster, a monster. Yeah. There were some there were some good times, I mean uh, from I actually gave up the music business in nineteen seventy eight. Um, well, I moved down to Devon and bought a hotel. And uh, I hadn't seen Screaming Lord Sutch. It's 1978, let me think. I hadn't seen Screaming Lord Sutch for 68, uh, 15 years, I suppose, 12 or 15 years. And um, I bought this hotel in Devon called the Golden Lion Hotel at Ashburton. And um, I noticed in the local newspaper around about 19. Late 79, early early 80, I suppose, 80, 80, 80, 81 maybe, 80, 81, yeah. Uh, an advert in the local paper for Screaming Lord Such to appear in Plymouth. So, bearing in mind I hadn't seen him for 12, 13 years. So I phoned up the gig he was playing and uh, asked if I could speak to Screaming Lord Such. And, um, he was there and I spoke to him and I said, Do you remember me? I'm Kerry Raffin, I remember you, you remember me? Yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he said, "Yeah, I remember you. Of course, I remember you." I said, "You, you some fun, didn't you?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "Well, I said, well, when you finish your gig down there, he was there for two nights apparently. Um, call in. You've got to pass uh, Ashburton on your way home. Call in and see me." So he did, and, um, and that must have been, yeah. This just reminded me. That must have been early, early '82, because um, well, it would have been about. March of 82, and I tell you why I remember that, because we had a good reminiscing that night, and I said, well, why don't you come up in June, June the 16th, because I'll be 40, that's my 40th birthday, and never thought no more of it, lo and behold, June the 16th, he turned up, and it was then, he stayed for all three or four nights then, and it was then that he and I formulated the official Monster Raven Looney Party, because, as you well know, Lord Such had been involved in politics before that with his National Teenage Party. And he first stood in Stoke on Trent, sorry, Stratford on Avon, in 1964, in the seat that Lord Profumo had to vacate in the Christine Keeler affair. And he always blamed tongue in cheek, he always blamed prostitution for him getting into politics. <laughs> and um, of course, he was, he was called the National Teenage Party then. And he was campaigning for votes for 18 because you couldn't vote till you were 21. And um, campaigning for all day pub opening. Yeah. Um, commercial radio as against the BBC stranglehold because the BBC refused to play any uh, rock and roll. And um, the abolition of the 11 plus. He didn't think 11 year old was the right age to take an exam where if you pass it or you didn't pass it, it would affect you for the rest of your life. Which it did. Um, it was like getting GSEs and A levels today. If you haven't got them, you you well, I never had any. I've done it all right out of it. So it just goes to prove you can do it all right. Yeah. And um, anyway, in 1978, I suppose when oh no, hang on, wait a minute. At that particular time, the Conservative Member of Parliament who was standing, mine's been Anthony Wedgwood Ben, but you might have to check up on that. Not too sure. He was asked what did he think of the policies of Screaming Lord Such and his National Teenage Party? And he said, they're nothing more than the rantings of a raving loony. And that's where the name came from. So when they actually did away with the 11 plus, um, we said, OK, let's become the raving loony party. Let's be the monster raving loony party. Now, a lot of people think the monster is something to do with Dracula and Frankenstein. It's not really. Monster means big. And we reckon that we were the biggest party of the whole lot because if all the party, all the people who didn't vote voted for us, we'd win. <laughs> but you mentioned passports for pets earlier on, yes. Um, I think it must have been 20 years before it happened we were campaigning for passports for pets. Why can't you have your pet inoculate, inoculate, take him to the vet, have a piece of paper, that's his passport, to say he's been inoculated, take him, your cat or your dog on board with you on holiday, and bring him back two weeks later without going through quarantine. Don't be so loony, they said. That's absolutely stupid. Passports for pets. Well, 20 years on, what, what are they doing? Exactly that. Well, they've got chips now, yeah, yeah. And they've gone even loonier. 
now a sheep, a cow, a horse, any animal that's exported abroad and brought back again has got to have a passport. <laughs> we never advocated that, so who are the loony ones? <laughs> I saw Lord Sunch once at the Oval, the little pub there. The Oval or Yeovil? Oh, uh, was it the Oval? The Oval. What, Kennington. Kennington. Kennington Oval, yeah. yeah. There's a little pub there. Oh, right. there I thought you night. said Yeovil. <laughs> Oval, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I think was he, was, he was revered by lots of musicians in my band. All the musicians revered Lord Sunch because of his band. Yes, because he, he had, had top musicians. Yeah, he did, yeah. Over the, I mean. And the uh, first bloke to do theatre. You know, I think. Um, Knowing the boys in his band, he said, he said he's, Jeff Beck played with him for a little while, Jimmy Page played with him a little while. Um, um, who's the famous pianist he had? Uh, the actor Paul Nichols. Paul. 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 Okay, Paul, Paul, Nichols. Nichols. Yeah, Paul Nichols. Paul Nicholas. Paul Nicholas. Yeah. And but see, all these people used to see people in Lord Sutton and think, hey, oh, that must be good fun to play with him. Like, it's it's it's, it's yeah. good. It's funny. It's good fun. But once they got playing with him, it, they didn't last all that long because they actually realised, believe it or believe it or not, yes, it was, it was a good stage act, but it only was an act. Um, poor old David Such, even if I say it myself, couldn't sing to save his life. Hence the screaming Lord Such. Um, he was a rock and roll shelter. And God bless him, the world needed those. There were many rock and roll shelters. I mean, he, he modelled himself on screaming Jay Hawkins. Who was a rock and roll shouter? I think Ian Drew even lifted a few things off of uh, yeah, Lord Sunshine. Yeah, and of course, Alice Cooper, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In fact, he went, such went out to America in the 70s and um, had a, a run in battle with uh, Alice Cooper. Oh. I think it was, I think it was um, put up between them by the publicity. Mm. Such was accusing Alice Cooper of stealing his act. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was uh, an album that came out. Um, called uh, Screaming Lord Such and Heavy Friends, which features all the people I've just mentioned, Jimmy Paisel and Keith Moon and a few more, John Bonham. And, um, and it was voted the worst album ever released. It was a compilation of things put together, you know. Um, I, I can remember, remember Keith Moon saying, I gave them no right to do that. I, ne I never did a recording, I just sat in on one session. <laughs> But it got released and it was voted the worst album ever made. But it's so collectible because it never sold any. I've actually got one, luckily enough. <laughs> but that's the sort of things that become collectible, isn't it? I could go on and on with this. It's like a never ending saga. Just like that, dude.